I'm going to show you the second derivative test, which I'm not a huge fan of. The reason I'm not a huge fan of the second derivative test is it doesn't always work. When the second derivative test doesn't work, you have to go back and use the first derivative test. So I just like using the first derivative test. But you should know what you don't know or what you're choosing not to use. So let's get going. So we're going to draw a graph. Maybe I just like that color orange. We want to draw a differentiable function, which means we also need a continuous function. We're going to name this function f. So where is our f prime positive? Well, f prime is the slope of f. How can we find out where f prime is positive? Well, f prime is positive when f is increasing. So I don't want to use numbers. Let's just break this up. It appears right about here. These are the places where things change. Okay. And so over here, let's see to the left of whatever this number is, f prime is greater than 0, which means f is increasing. And here f prime is also greater than 0 because f is increasing. Maybe I'll even color those guys in green. Okay, so where is our graph have a slope that's less than 0? I don't want that green. Let's do that, not orange, blue, something that'll pop. Well, f prime is going to be less than 0 when f is decreasing. So that's going to be in this region. And over here on the right. So here f prime is less than 0, and over here f prime is also going to be less than 0. Or f prime is negative, f is decreasing. Ooh, what is f double prime? Well f double prime is the second derivative of f, but my question is about a graph. What do you look for on a graph to try to decide when f double prime is positive? The answer is concavity. So where is this graph concave up? Somewhere in here. I don't exactly know where that starts and stops, but in between this part, let's say f double prime is positive or f is concave up. Okay. I'm sure you can guess the question that's coming next. Where is our graph have a second derivative that's negative? We could also say, um, where is f concave down? And that is basically everywhere it's not concave up. So here on the left-hand side, and over here on the right-hand side. Hopefully that looks like concave up to you. So here, f double prime is less than 0, f is concave down. And to the right of that point of inflection, f double prime is less than 0, f is concave down. Okay, so now we're ready to try to figure out what I want you to figure out. So we're going to look back at that graph we created and figure out a spot where f prime is greater than, I'm sorry, f prime is equal to zero and f double prime is less than zero. What does that mean? Well, maybe we can translate those two. So f prime equals zero, that means f has a horizontal tangent. What does it mean for f double prime to be less than 0? That means f is concave down. So let's look back. Let's see if we can find a place where f has a horizontal tangent and f is concave down at that same spot. Well, horizontal tangents are pretty easy to figure out. That's right up here, down at this minimum, and up at this local maximum. 
it was more than horizontal tangents. We want f to have a horizontal tangent and f to be concave down at the same spot. Oh, that's right here and right here at the two local maximums. Is that what we're looking for? I don't know. Maybe we can do a generalized version. So we want f to have a horizontal tangent and f to be concave. Yeah, that's definitely what we're talking about. And that's the answer. F has a local minimum, uh, maximum. Okay. So what about if F prime was equal to zero and F double prime was positive? So that would be F has a horizontal tangent and F is concave up. F has a horizontal tangent and F is concave up. What would that mean? That means F has a local minimum. And that whole idea is the second derivative test. I suppose we should make that longer. That's the second derivative test for local extreme values. I think we uh, need to add on the rest of the local extreme value stuff because it sounds like second derivative test is about concavity and it kind of is, but the outcome of the second derivative test is a local maximum or a local minimum. Let's give you one example. All right, so the second derivative test to verify the extreme values of 4x cubed minus 12x squared. Hopefully you're thinking a graph something like this. Okay. And so what do we do first? We do what we always do. We say y equals 4x cubed minus 12x squared is a polynomial, so is continuous and differentiable everywhere. I really care about the continuity, so that's what I'm going to state. So we're going to find y prime, which is 12x squared minus 24x. We're going to let y prime equal 0. And maybe we should factor 12x times x minus 2. x equals 0 x equals 2. Okay, So we're pretty sure x equals 0 is right here, x equals 2 is right there, but I want to show you how the second derivative test works. What were we looking for? We were looking for where a first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is positive or negative to find a local maximum or a local minimum. So we found where y prime, the first derivative, is equal to 0. Let's find y double prime. So y double prime is going to be 24x minus 24. We're going to let y double prime equals 0. And I'm sure you can do that in your head. x is equal to 1. Wait, what the heck does that mean? Well, that just tells us that 1 is where y double prime can change signs. So choose a value larger than 1. When you do, y double prime is positive, which means y is concave up. Choose a value less than 1, like 0, y double prime will be negative, which means y is concave down. Okay, so we're second derivative test, you'll notice, does have quite a bit of work. It's not much of a shortcut, unless you have something like e to the x. Um, so we have two candidates, x equals 0 and x equals 2. At x equals 0, y prime is 0. And at x equals 0, y double prime is negative. So let's write that answer. y prime equals 0 at x equals 0, 
and y double prime is negative, you can't really say at x equals zero, you have to say on the interval containing. x equals zero, so y equals 4x cubed minus 12x squared has a local maximum at x equals zero. I think that's only the one half. Um, let's go back and say why we need on the interval containing. Well, y double prime is a change in y prime, which means we need to be talking about more than one place. So we have to say on the interval containing, it doesn't matter which interval, it's just some interval containing x is equal to 0, just to the left and to the right, that whole interval, y double prime is negative. I'm running out of room, so I'm not going to talk about, I'm not going to write what happens at x equals 2, but I'm sure you can guess. At x equals 2, y prime is 0, and on the interval containing x equals 2, y double prime is positive, so 4x cubed minus 12x squared has a local minimum at x equals 2. If you've waited this long, you might want to know why I don't like the second derivative test. Well, that wasn't much less work. In fact, I think it might have been more work than the first derivative test. But what happens sometimes is once you get to y double prime, if you have y double prime equals 0 and y prime equals 0, you can't use the second derivative test. You have to go back and use the first derivative test, which always works. So I just use the thing that always works. I hope that helps.